Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and today we're going to be making a diorama on a World War II scene uh, titled I Shut Them Down. Okay guys, so this is a private commission, so I've been sent these two kits. So the main one is the uh, British Light Utility Car made by Tamiya. Now I've already gone ahead and I've already showed all the parts of this kit in a bit of a, I suppose like a video review. Not re I didn't really review them, I just showed the, the pieces, but uh, if you're interested in seeing that, there'll be a link to that in the description bar below. But basically, uh, when you put this up together and you build it up, you get if, if you send off this other set, which was made by uh, D Day Miniatures number uh, three five one four seven, and uh, yeah, you basically you get like uh, six characters to go in that fit in the same scale, which is a uh, one to thirty five scale, and uh, yeah, you can make that scene with these two kits. So that's what the client wants me to build up. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the figures to one side for now and I'm going to start by uh, grey priming all the key parts to this model. Okay guys, uh, nothing too special, just regular flat grey prime from uh, which I bought from the factory shop. Okay guys, so as you can see here, all the main key parts have all been uh, grey primed. So uh, yeah, I'm going to follow the instructions and I'm going to uh, build it up as the instructions imply and then uh, hopefully we can crack on with the paint job soon. Okay guys, nothing too flashy to start off with. Basically just taking me time with the snippers and the nail file and just going through all the key parts and just assembling them as I go following the instructions. So I'm currently working on the main engine to the Tilly truck and there's quite a few key parts to that uh, engine. The, in hindsight, I don't think the engines were very much, uh, very big back in the day, but uh, there is quite a few niggly parts to get on there. Okay guys, so seeing as we're not adding the canopy part, this part we don't actually need. So working on the bottom of the car now, and there's quite a lot of fiddly little intricate parts to this which you have to take your time when filing off the seam lines because the slightest little give to the left or to the right can easily break the uh, styrene part so yeah caution is advised okay guys so for the next part I was working on the underside of the Tilly truck and as you can see there installing the engine which had to be installed up from uh, the upside down position so we're uh, plugging away and it's starting to take a lot more shape now it's uh, quite a lot of intricate parts to this uh, the, the underside of this kit so at this point I'm working on the wheels I decided to work on the two front facing wheels first the reason why is I believe there's like a slight size differential between the uh, front wheels and the back wheels. Uh, I don't think there's much, not much that you can actually tell, but uh, they were labelled different front to back in the uh, in the kit, so I thought it, that was probably was uh, important. So I made a little uh, a little note that I put these in a little plastic bag to def to separate the the front wheels from the back wheels. So at this point, I am just applying more parts to the uh, to the front part, and uh, just following the instructions as I go. And we are getting started on the back carriage. So this is where the, uh, the all the main characters are going to be displayed later on. 
So there was two different display options with this back carriage. So in hindsight, one door was to model the the back hatch uh, or back compartment in a in a fixed position, and then the second option was to display it like open, so you could have characters loading or unloading the back of the truck. So the client asked me to build the upright version and this is where all the main figures or three of the figures from the, the secondary set will be uh, housed and displayed. So yeah, so just decided to use uh, contact hobby cement and make sure that everything was nice and glued and ni nice and tidy. So at the moment I'm working on the two chairs. Now I didn't go ahead and glue them straight away, I just wanted to get them in a position where we can be soon gluing them. So at the moment I'm just adding uh, some of the accessories like the gear shift etc. Uh, working on the front part of the car now where the uh, the car overlaps the, the two main front wheels. So just applied the steering wheel there, now that was very delicate, uh, a lot, a very a uh, lot of warning if you're doing this kit, be careful with that because that was very thin styrene. And then this is the top part of the main carriage of the uh, of the front of the car. Uh, and obviously just adding a few little parts to the engine there. So we've got the radiator and we've got the battery uh, now glued in place. So again, a lot more intricate parts needed for the uh, inside the engine. So at this point I'm working on the front bonnet, or the hood of the car. So there's only two real parts to that, so you've got the main hood itself and then you've got the little Tilly truck emblem on the, on the front end there. That was very, very tiny, that part, so uh, be careful when doing that kit yourself. Okay guys, so I'm going to go in with a base coat of uh, yellow olive from uh, Vallejo Model Air. Okay guys, so f I'm just basically going to uh, use the yellow olive just to basically add a base coat to all the main key parts to the kit, just as a foundation colour. Uh, yeah, just uh, take me time, just getting in uh, every every little nook and cranny that I co that I can. Okay, so for this part, I just use a regular medium brown acrylic just to uh, just to give a base coat to the both chairs. So I did one side, use the air air dryer to uh, dry it out quickly, and then uh, just did the other side. Same brown for the uh, handle to the spade that goes on the top of the truck, and uh, yeah, and then just. Uh, Using a uh, like a colour that I mixed uh, for the inside of the uh, of the wheel trims of uh, all the all the tyres. Same again, I, I mapped out uh, and kept them separate. The front wheels to the back wheels to the wheel that goes on the top, the spare wheel. At this point I was using like a really dark grey to add a base coat to the tyres 
I tend to use dark grey rather than black because I just think it's uh, it's better, it's easier to weather and it's easier to colour in later on. At this point, I started using the uh, the clear plastic parts to the uh, to the windows. This is the front windscreen being added now. So one tip when using these kind of uh, styrene plastic part, trans translucent parts is don't use uh, the, the hobby cement glue or super glue because it tends to fog over the, the parts. You're best using or gluing those parts with just regular PVA glue just applied with a cocktail stick. At this point I was adding a dry brush of silver just over some of the uh, underside metal parts just to give a cross uh, a nice little, you know, even though you're not going to see this it just gives a cross a little bit more like there's metal rather than uh, just painted plastic. So at this point I was making the main engine like a, like a kind of, uh, like a dark green colour. Apparently that's what they were back in the day. And this, uh, the fire, the fire extinguisher, I thought would have been red, but according to the instructions, it's actually gold. So I don't know if that's historically correct or not. So, but I thought the instructions know more than I do. So I just went in with a gold uh, highlighter pen. And at this point, I'm painting the inside of the radiator and the battery a uh, dark matte black. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with a watered down black acrylic wash and I'm going to get into all the nooks and crannies and gently wipe away the excess. So yeah, so just going in with a black watered down acrylic wash and uh, using some cotton buds to try and get out as much of the, uh, the, the excess parts as possible. This is just basically just to darken it down and add like basic uh, like shadow kind of tones I suppose now we, it also makes it look a little bit more aged and used but uh, you can add, you can go back in and add uh, uh, like a yellow olive uh, uh, highlight dryer brush uh, later on to really bring those uh, that shade of colour back out so yeah so this part's a bit tedious it's just basically going around painting every little tiny little piece and then same again uh, clean it off with uh, a bit of a clean kitchen towel. Uh, the hardest part with this with this kind of kit is uh, wiping it all off, but not accidentally breaking or damaging any of the uh, the really small fiddly parts. And obviously, you don't want to get it on the translucent parts as well, like the windows. So yeah, so just going through it all, doing it all, taking your time, making sure that uh, you know you don't. Uh, you know overdo it at this point I added some uh, hobby cement glue to the uh, connecting uh, parts to the bottom of the chair so you can see the chairs also got a uh, black wash so they're looking a little bit more uh, weathered and a little bit uh, more used which uh, let's face it they're not gonna have brand new uh, clean seats and these used uh, old vehicles So yeah, so at this point I went in with like a medium brown watercolour. Now when you first apply it to a dark shade like this, uh, you don't really see it, but once the, it like oxidises and dries, it, uh, it, it looks like, um, I suppose, uh, uh, spread out like dirt, where the uh, people have been jumping in the back, etc, or they've been loading stuff in. So it just looks like it's... Uh, being used I suppose so yeah so just adding a few more dry brush highlights to the underside and then to the engine there and then some of the side panels and then obviously the, uh, the back part there as well so only a tiny tiny microscopic dab of uh, silver was used for that A little bit more was used on the radiator and the battery. 
basically just to bring out all the little uh, details and the highlights. Same again, just a microscopic part for the, for the front wheel arch. So a little bit more was used on the uh, on the wheel trims. Obviously, they'd uh, be a little bit lighter and a little bit more used and abused. Just take me time trying to get and make sure none of it gets on the tire itself. Uh, use just flat, proper silver for the uh, top of the spade or for the head of the spade. The next part, I tabbed a little bit of wood filler on my fingers, and then just gently went around the uh, the the main bridge surface that attaches to the road, uh, contacts, makes contact with the road. Uh, basically later on when we repaint this or add some uh, weathered highlights it, uh, it looks like accumulated um, like dirt I suppose in the, in the tyre tread. Okay guys so here are the figures that go with it. So these are made by D-Day Miniatures or Miniature Studio and it's uh, same 1 to 35 scale and uh, yeah six figures set designed for the Tamiya kit so uh, yeah number 35147 titled I shot them down okay guys so I just started off by mapping out uh, what parts needed to go with what figure uh, thankfully they more or less did most of the key work for you in the packaging because they're all in their own little individual little packets so that's uh, nice uh, I didn't really want to <laughs> try and map out uh, all uh, all 12 different arms and whatnot to uh, different six figures so yeah so uh, so same as the, uh, with the styrene uh, but obviously this is resin just uh, clipping off the uh, the unwanted or needed uh, parts that connected to uh, where it was uh, injected in the mould. So uh, yeah, just uh, took me a while to go through all the main key parts to this because, uh, like I said, the six figures, but there's a lot of accessories like the arms, the legs, the heads, and you know, weapons and whatnot, newspapers and all kinds of little fiddly little parts to add. So yeah, so at this point I was just grinding down some of the unwanted. Uh, parts where they're obviously being in the, uh, injected in the mould so you've got like seam lines running on all surfaces so uh, yeah that was uh, rather fiddly and tedious at parts so uh, speed up uh, footage here so basically same again just uh, cutting the parts trimming them making them fit For the most part, most of the parts were really clean, so not much to uh, complain about. They did seem to go together rather well. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in with uh, some surface primer and I'm going to give all of these a one cup prime. Okay guys, so I decided to go in with a paintbrush and uh, surface primer rather than just taking them out and regular like white or grey primed. Uh, basically in nutshells because these are like a lot smaller and a lot fidd uh, fiddlier and there's a lot more like spare parts like the rifle and stuff like that that I didn't want to like blast it with the airbrush and then the parts like flew off and then I couldn't find them again so I thought it was 
a better idea to just do it manually and uh, it takes a lot longer but uh, it's a lot safer and, and also I know I can get into all the nooks and crannies this way where I might just like accidentally miss parts uh, with uh, doing it with a spray can like under the armpits and the, the under the crevices of like the knee, knee where the knees are and stuff like that but uh, also, I don't have to worry about uh, getting too close with the air can and uh, paint accumulating and running. So yeah, so here I am just going around with the uh, with the hair dryer just basically to speed things up with the drying. And now uh, now we're going in with uh, Humble number 61 regular flesh colour. So I I like using this for the base to base coat for me uh, flesh on all my figures. But uh, the only negative is uh, it, it takes multiple coats. So, but at the same time, you don't want something that'll just you just blob on there once, and uh, you know you don't do it in one go because it does tend to, um, I suppose, take away some surface details. So I would I do prefer uh, doing it in multiple layers, but it is a lot longer to do. I hope that made sense. So I speeded the footage up, uh, uh, I think it's like times uh, four at this point. Uh, just basically because I just didn't want to take up the entire video and just sh uh, you know, showing, yeah, uh, doing the same flesh colour on all the figures. Okay, so now we get into the more interesting thing, or an interesting part, which is adding uh, base colours. So, as you can see here, I'm adding a base coat of uh, uh, white to uh, the top jumper of uh, the, uh, I believe this is the Polish fighter pilot. So, uh, this is, the main model I suppose is based around this guy because the title I shot them down but he was the uh, he was supposed to be the fighter race that shot down the the German uh, Luftwaffe pilots uh, that have been rounded up and uh, <laughs> going to be yeah, took to processing so uh, so I suppose it's kind of based on him So I'm just adding a base coat of white. Uh, he's not going to stay white. That's just to add uh, or lighten up the tone, um, so we can. Uh, I don't have to put the uh, the the proper colours on too thick and and lose some details later on. So it's just basically just like an undercoat to lighten the figures up, so it's easier to paint uh, later on. Obviously, the white part to be kept white, so they'll just get a second coat later on. Okay guys, I've speeded the footage back up again, so same again, this is like times four. So uh, so yeah, so going in with like a very light blue undercoat um, to uh, to his trousers. This will be darkened down later on. Same with the uh, the lady from the, I believe it's the Waffa. Because uh, that's going to be like a, a medium kind of blue later on. And same blue is uh, as an undercoat to the home guard as well. Oh, this is for his full suit actually, not just the trousers. And then same for the trousers for uh, for the German officer. And the same for the uh, for the Luftwaffe pilot uh, hat. So yes, yeah, so this is a darker tone for uh, for the for the main driver of the vehicle. Uh, I believe that the main colour I need to use is like a like a sandy kind of colour. But uh, adding a, a dark undertone first, uh, I suppose, gets into all the little uh, highlights like the nooks and the crannies, like the the pockets and the belt and and, and all the creases of the legs and stuff like that. It, uh, it it just adds a little bit more uh, depth to the figure rather than just going in with a uh, flat 
Coca-Cola. So at this point I believe I'm, oh yeah, painting the uh, trousers, so this is more the proper grey that uh, that he has. Same goes for the uh, for the hat as well. And this is more uh, historically correct uh, dark blue slash dark grey for the waffer uh, lady. And then, uh, yeah, and then a uh, lighter course of uh, blue for his trousers and his hat. So they do tend to take quite a long time to paint up these uh, smaller figures because you have to cram a lot of detail into such a small space. So it's, you use less paint but they take up more time. They're starting to take more shape now. They're starting to look like the proper versions of what they uh, are supposed to represent. So at this point, I'm painting with a cocktail stick, <laughs> getting all all the little uh, little details like the uh, badges and the belt buckles and the buttons on the shirts. So yeah, it takes a long time to paint. Uh, and this and all these little intricate deals. So for the next part, this was the newspaper that was provided uh, with the uh, with the figures. So obviously this goes in the uh, the Waffa lady's uh, hands, sat in the uh, passenger seat of the car. So just took me time for uh, with well I was going to say a sharp scalpel, but from the looks of it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, probably need sharpening so I ended up uh, abandoning that idea and going in with the regular scissors I think that the scissors do a better job of, uh, really. just a normal print stick and I glued the both halves uh, both sides together so it's got the inside and the outside and then just folded it in half and then uh, used a tiny tiny little bit of uh, PVA glue with a cocktail stick to uh, glue both hands and then added the newspaper in place so yeah so uh, on, on the actual book uh, on the box art it, uh, she has the newspaper just uh, folded on one side but I decided to make it like, an open up version instead so just add a super glue to the undersides of the bottom and uh, yeah just gluing them in place I had to add these in place before I added the uh, the main carriage, basically, just because they wouldn't have fit the other way around. So adding some uh, deck holes at the moment uh, to the inside where the speedometers uh, are, uh, uh, speedometers, sorry. Uh, so uh, 
these were rather tricky to get in, in on in there. Same again, you have to apply them beforehand because you wouldn't be able to do it after the fact. So, yeah, just applying it on and uh, trying to take it off with a uh, Q-tip. And uh, if any, anybody who makes models watching this, uh, I think everybody has had nightmares with these uh, transfers in the past. One tip I would give you is do one at a time because if you some people just dunk them all in water and leave them and then they end up finding that they uh, separate and connect with each other and then good luck separating them. So it takes longer but you're more accurate doing one at a time or keep them uh, you know individually separated. So uh, yes, yeah, so now that the figs are glued in place, we can go ahead and we can glue the uh, the top hull to the car. So this part was a bit fiddly. Uh, it seemed that the radiator uh, was getting in the way, so. I had to go back in with the uh, clippers and uh, clip uh, some of the side, the bottom part of the sides off. Uh, then it fit fine, but uh, I don't know why they were uh, originally implied. I think they're supposed to click in place, but they didn't. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm going in with a scalpel now. I'm basically trying to smooth that area down. So. Uh, I would uh, advise people going to build this kit to maybe do that prior for this stage. And uh, yeah, just adding some uh, hobby cement and uh, gluing the, the back part of uh, the main hull to uh, the, the back carriage, I suppose. At this point, you don't want it. You want to just apply it in place and hold it into place. You don't want to be moving your fingers around because of any cement that might accidentally be on your fingers. If you move it around, it's just going to, you know, rub off uh, on the paint work around it. So you want to uh, you want to keep it still as possible. At this point, I'm going in with a uh, silver highlighter and I'm just. Uh, applying some uh, highlights to some of the various parts. I believe these parts are the to the uh, to the window wipers. Oh sorry, not the silver. Is it silver? Or is it Do you have a silver or it's black? One of the two. I can't really tell. I think it, I think the window window wipers were black, so yeah. So this part was really fiddly because you don't want to accidentally uh, get any of that hobby cement on any uh, of the uh, front windscreen. So you have to really take your time applying these. So there's the bonnet in place. Now we're not going to glue that because obviously we want to uh, be able to lift it up so we can see all the detail of the engine. So uh, yeah, so applying the spare wheel on the top now. So that went on rather uh, easily, nice. Uh, this part is obviously uh, attaching the, the spade. Now I would su suggest uh, taking your time with that because if you push down too hard, you'll uh, set, you'll break the uh, the the styrene uh, handle and then it'll just look, look odd so yeah apply it via the, the the spade head first so yeah so uh, attaching the 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 open door so uh, hobby cement on the back hinges and then uh, super glue on the inside of the female driver's uh, right hand so a super glue on the inside and styrene on the outside so uh, just styrene glue for the uh, for the the side uh, passenger door. So it's starting to take shape now. I 
Okay, so for the next part, I'm adding the uh, the headlights. Now there was uh, different options for this, but uh, the client, the pictures he sent me, the uh, the model had these ones, so I decided to keep it the same. So I believe these parts of the door handles, so uh, it was tricky to get to uh, this so I had to hold it in place with one of my, uh, I believe that was the uh, matte varnish uh, from Vallejo. So going in with uh, tweezers and apologies if uh, ye, if most of the images are uh, of the back of my hand but it's uh, really tricky to get that in there. Oh, now I'm doing the door handles. <laughs> I'm a little bit ahead of myself here. So same again, the tiniest of uh, amount of glue because you don't want it to smudge or you don't want it to like run down and knock your paint your paintwork. So yeah, use uh, cocktail sticks are a must at this point. And a tiny bit of glue goes a long way with this. Another uh, nice lingering shot of the back of my hand there. So at this point I'm using just a regular uh, dark brown acrylic just to emphasise the, uh, the, the leather um, brace or fastening. Uh, applying uh, the same base coat colour to the headlights so it all matches. Those are nicely uh, glued in place now so I don't have to worry about disturbing or breaking those off. And then just a, a base coat to the handles as well. Now these will get highlighted with a silver highlighter later on. I believe these are. Oh yeah, that's the the, the front uh, side part. I believe that has, that has to be like an undercoat of yellow. I believe. So here we are with the uh, silver highlighter. If you if you don't have one of these, they are, I strongly recommend uh, getting them because they uh, take up a. A lot of a uh, lot of time uh, using silver paint all the time. So at this point, I'm using acrylic white as a undertone to the uh, headlights. So uh, we'll go and be adding uh, translucent plastic to those later on. So at this point, I'm using uh, my drill bit to add uh, a small hole channel to the wheels. And then I'm uh, gluing and uh, pinning some uh, thin metal rod to the underside. This bit, this is basically to uh, later on connect it to a base. Okay, guys. So for the next part, I'm going to go in with the airbrush with some uh, mud brown from Vallejo Model Air. Okay guys, so for the next part, now I've gone ahead and I've watered down some of that mud brown from uh, Vallejo Model Air and then I'm going to go in with an old stipple brush, toothbrush dunk it in there and I'm going to very gently add a little uh, splatter effect of mud uh, all around the sides of the car
Okay guys, instead of this going to waste, I'm going to go in with a brush and I'm going to add some more highlights to the wheels. And uh, lastly, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a, like a mud smear to the outskirts of the window to show like window wipers in action. Okay guys, so for the next part we're going to need a base. So I've, uh, I've managed to locate this one which has got a nice routed edge on all sides and uh, yeah I think this would uh, fit really nice so for the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to give it a grey prime and then I'm going to go over it with some uh, black spray paint Ok guys, so now that we've got our base ready, for the next stage we need to start modelling a little bit of uh, scenery I suppose. So in nature you don't really get completely flat surfaces like this. So we need to add a few little bumps and curves etc. So the idea is the car is going to be like coming down here, or like facing one of the, one of the corners. So it's going to be taking up a main bulk like that and then we need like a little bit of a delve here then goes into road and then a little bit of a delve here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a sharp scalpel and I'm going to add some uh, scratch marks and that will make the, uh, it easier for the, uh, for the wood filler to connect to it. <laughs> Okay guys, that's what to do. So for the next part, I'm going to go in with some wood filler and I'm going to add two little corner bumps. Actually guys, one thing I forgot to do was uh, add some masking tape to the inside. Okay guys, so we don't need to go too crazy uh, because uh, we don't want to make like huge massive uh, bumps and lumps just on a, on a small little uh, diorama like this. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this coat to dry and then I might go over it with another skim over the top just to fill in all these little nooks and crannies and then we can uh, think about the next part. Okay guys, so it's been a good 24 hours and the first layer is nice and dry so I'm going to go in with some more, build up a little bit more bulk and then smooth some of these uh, cracks and bumps and lumps out. Okay guys, so I've already gone ahead and I've given this a light sand over the top, so on the camera it might look like it's all flat, but to the eye it is it is bumpy, so this centre part does look like it's like a dip, like a little bit for a road. So uh, I've cleaned off the dust, so for the next part we need to go ahead and need to add like a coat and to protect it, so I've gone ahead and I've mixed some uh, regular uh, PVA uh, wood glue and some uh, medium brown acrylic with a splash of water mixed thoroughly and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to give this a couple of layers.
Okay guys, I'm going to go in with more of that watered down mud brown and I'm going to give it a layer out to the base just so it mimics the same colour mud as what's on the car. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this felt to the bottom of this base with just some regular PVA glue. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to fully dry. Okay guys, it's been 24 hours, let's see what we've got. Okay guys, that has worked lovely. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll trim off the sides. Okay guys, I think that worked uh, really well, so uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue in some of the corners, but uh, for the most part, that's uh, fantastic. Okay guys, so uh, I kept the wheels all separate, the uh, rear wheels separate from the front wheels, so I didn't mix them up. And uh, as you can see there, I'm gluing them in the upright position, so the pins are facing down. So these will later be, uh, the holes will be drilled into the base and then this can uh, work as like a pin system so the car doesn't actually uh, fall off and break in the post. So just adding the, uh, the hub caps there um, to the inside of the wheels and at the moment I'm adding a little tiny bit of PVA glue to the front, um, front lights and I'm putting some translucent uh, plastic there so it uh, looks like proper headlights. And uh, yeah, for the next part I'm going to add that uh, yellow that I talked about earlier. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some of these uh, sticker transfers. Now according to the instructions, uh, the version that I'm doing is the 47th London Infantry Division of the United Kingdom. Okay guys, so for the next part I need to go ahead and I need to carefully map out uh, where to drill so these little uh, pinholes or these little channels can be uh, connected to the base. So yeah, so it's just basically uh, map one out, drill a hole, put it back, rinse and repeat until we're done.
Okay, guys, that looks about correct. Now, I'm not going to push it all the way down because I don't want it to get stuck. But I'm happy with that. So, uh, for the next stage, let's start on the scenery. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so I took what was left of that uh, brown acrylic mixed with PVA glue and I've watered it really down so it's uh, it's a lot thinner now. And uh, I'm just going to go in with one of these uh, droplet things and I'm just going to add a few drops on top and then that'll help uh, dry uh, glue it on the top surface as well. Okay guys, for the next part I'm going to go in with the airbrush with some uh, Mud Brown from Model Air. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some green highlights for the way I'm going to put the grass areas with using some olive green same again from uh, Model Air but Okay guys so for the next part I'm going to go in with some black and uh, I'm just going to add some uh, dark contour uh, edges Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to use a stipple brush and I'm going to dry brush on some uh, soft cream from a tester pot from Wilco's. For the next bit I'm going to add some thick PVA glue on the sides of the road and I'm going to add some of this stuff which is uh, like grounded up corks and uh, that will just make it look like uh, thick uh, boulders that have been pushed to the sides. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and I'll leave all that to dry. Okay guys, so now that that's been given uh, a better top coat, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a quick blast of uh, matte varnish. Okay guys, so as you can see there, the uh, matte varnish reacts with the the chalk pastel to give it like a dusty road feel. So yeah, so we'll go ahead, we'll leave this to fully dry and then we'll uh, start on the grass. So for the next part, we're going to be going ahead with some static grass in the applicator 
and we're going to apply some watered down PVA glue. So this is what's left of that uh, that brown acrylic PVA glue mix that I made the other day, and as you can see, it's uh, it's quite runny. So uh, so yes, yeah, so we're going to apply that, and then we're going to apply the the scenic grass. Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and glue the truck in place. Okay guys, that seems to have worked really well. So as you can see there, it, uh, all, all four wheels are where they need to be. So yeah, I'm a bit fiddly but I'm happy with uh, how it ended up. So yeah, so for the next part, we'll uh, go ahead and we'll add some of the people. Okay guys, so just the last figure now. Okay guys, so there's going to be a little bit of a problem with this one because I wanted to keep the engine, uh, the bonnet, um, loose. So you can obviously have a look at the engine. But uh, but kind of the reference for us, it's supposed to be leaning up with his hand on the bonnet like that so I'm not really too sure what to do um, I think it'll look odd if I haven't placed elsewhere so right, I'm gonna have to have a think about this and then uh, yeah I'll uh, get back to you in the next bit okay guys so this is the best thing I can think of so he's going to be slightly leaning on these rocks and he's leaning over and his hand is on the uh, on this part of the car here. So that seems to fit in there quite naturally, quite nice. So I can add that soup with a little bit of super glue. And then he's also looking more towards the inside of the car so it looks like he's receiving the driver uh, a lot better and then uh, as a bonus we can also get the detail of the of the engine yay so uh, so yeah so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna add some super glue to his hand and then a little bit to the bottom of his feet and try and sit him naturally Okay guys, we're going to go ahead and leave that to dry and then hopefully we uh, we can make that work. Okay, so for the next part I wanted to make a little makeshift little fence that uh, you normally find in countryside. So I just took uh, two normal matchsticks, give them a watercolour uh, base coat of, br of medium brown and then just cut them in half, file them to a, a smooth surface and then drill four holes and then glued them in place. Then after that I got some 5 amp fuse wire and just took me time just uh, stretching it, wrapping it around a post and then basically just gluing them in place and that's what I'm doing right now and uh, kept one of the ends taut and then left them to dry and then I would cut it free 
and then I'll just repeat the process for the middle wire and uh, once fully glued then I'd go ahead and repeat it one more time for the for the top wire so with using fin wire like 5 amp uh, that should be in scale with the diorama okay guys so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry and then I'm thinking about adding uh, some trees okay so I've started off by just having like a plastic little makeshift tree I painted it brown and then uh, give it some PVA glue and then just dipped it in some uh, shrubbery from, from uh, Java Scenics and then once once built up and dried I just to simply uh, drill two holes, one at the front of the diorama and one at the back of the diorama and then just glued them in place with PVA glue and left to dry and uh, the finished results is uh, really nice, I'm really happy how they turned out and for the next part I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a few little stones here and there Okay guys, so uh, I went into matter control to make a nameplate. Now the client, uh, I got in contact with him and he said that he would like it to be titled, uh, what the uh, figures were titled, uh, which is uh, I shot them down and then uh, Battle of Britain uh, 1940, which uh, again was on the, uh, is on the box art of the, uh, of the figures. So yeah, so I basically just went into matter control and then uh, got like a rectangle shape, made it uh, three millimeters high, put a smaller cube-esque uh, uh, rectangle over the top of it, uh, deleted most of it, uh, put the text in of uh, I shot them down, scaled it to fit the uh, the top part or the or the top half of the uh, of the diorama of the uh, nameplate. Uh, shrinked it down to also uh, to be three millimeters tall. Uh, yeah, and then uh, selected it and uh, added it all together, and then uh, yeah, and then just drag and drop the next text bar, uh, and then just uh, wrote on uh, Battle of Britain 1940. Uh, shrunk that down because obviously it's uh, it's more word and or more letters to cram in the same space. Uh, yeah, and then just added that to the bottom second half. And then same again, dragged it, all, uh, highlighted it all, and then just added it all as one piece. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, by the end of it, uh, it worked really well. So let's go ahead and print this out. So the uh, name plate has been printed off and I'm uh, really happy with the results so uh, yeah let's go ahead and grey prime it. Okay guys so there's the name plate all uh, metallic -ed. So uh, for the next stage I'm going to go in with some watered down black acrylic and I'm going to give it a black wash and then gently wipe away the excess.
Okay guys, I think it's finished. Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a bit on the long side, but there was a lot to cram into one video. So uh, if you've enjoyed it, please smash that like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps few people find the YouTube channel, which I'm always appreciative of. Thank you for your help. If you have any comments, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and knock that notification button so you don't miss out on future builds. So once again, I'm Francis Gray, and this is the Tilly Truck build from Tamiya with D-Day Miniatures. And now I'll see you in the next build.